what's up YouTube welcome to today's video where we're gonna go over one of my farming strategies and what happens when you get unlucky when you find an apothecary card or when you're trying to farm for the apothecary card a lot of people always ask me are you even making money with the strategy and I was kind of curious I was gonna do like a hundred map batch but I only did 60 maps as I got bored but basically I did around 60 to 8 60 maps I had rolled like 80 maps or so I just wanted to kind of test out how much the profit per hour was and I did get unlucky in this batch so I decided why not check out what exactly happens or how bad the profit per hour is if you don't find an apothecary card and right now all of the rage and farming is all about trying to get apothecary and it's pretty much the only farming method that still exists in the game that you actually drop items from monsters outside of altars and that's something we'll go over a little bit. And that's pretty much the state of the game. But as you can see for this farming strategy, and I will give you a brief overview of the farming strategy, is you run to the boss, you click the altars, and after you click all the altars, you, what's it called, you run, you open all the strong boxes. So it's a strong box farm, farming strategy. In this video, you can see this is a sample map run. Each map takes around like four to five minutes, depending on how lucky you are. So you pretty much run straight to the boss, you run down the two alleys, so you can see there's an alley on this side over here, and there's going to be another alley down here. And the whole point is you clear the map backwards, and then you start opening the boxes at the start of the map, so you can open all of the boxes while you're still in the deli mirror. Now the thing about this strategy is it's kind of hard to pull off and have all of the strong boxes open. As you can see right here, you can see the timer, this is for the legion timer, and then there's going to be another timer for the deli mirror. So... It is very, very difficult. Oh, we got a lightning card drop right there. It's very difficult to try to open all of the strong boxes within the Deli Mirror Fog because we're not running uh, King Harbinger and a lot of people use King Harbinger to pause the fog. This is a wandering path strategy. As you can see right here, the quant of the map is around 353%, which is an insane amount. So you can see right here, I'm trying to open all of the strong boxes while the Deli Mirror is still going on. And... As you can see, not that much loot drops. You'll notice that a lot of the loot that actually drops is maps. And then you'll get like the enlightening card here and there. And we are using winged scarabs. And this is all winged scarabs. And this is us farming 8 mod maps. And the map, as you can see, around 3 to 4 minutes. Maybe 5 minutes, depending on how long it takes me to clear. The most annoying part about the strategy is definitely the fact that you have to go backwards while looting. Because time is of such an issue where you clear the deli mirror, you can't actually spend the time to loot. So that's actually one of the downsides to the stress. So you can see right here, I'm pretty much just going over the map and trying to, what's it called? Trying to make sure all of the strong boxes are open before the deli mirror ends. And right here, not too bad of a map, not the best. Anytime you find a star drop with like enlightened or something like that is generally considered a pretty good outcome. Now you might be wondering, what exactly is the profit per hour of the strategy and are you even making money when you use full winged scarabs? And the answer is actually relatively surprising. So let's go see. Do we actually get any loot here? I thought we actually got some winged scarabs from what I remember, but maybe not. Maybe this is all that will exist. And make sure to look at all the heavy belts and letter belts. You never know when a mage blood might actually exist. And this is the annoying part of trying to Oh, look, there we go. I knew there was a mob with some scarabs there. So that's like kind of like the god touch from nowadays. But what exactly is the profit, right? So like I said, Apothecary Farming is the premier endgame farm. It's pretty much what everyone is doing nowadays, especially in late game. You're still playing the league. Now, I made a Magic Fight Kinetic Blast Juggernaut because it's a little bit tankier. And I do have around 90 to 100% quant depending on if I use Bisco's Leash with the Quant Implicit Corrupt and around 250% rarity. I have found nearly like 5 cards and 250 maps, so it's around 1 in 60 to 80 maps in my experience if you run this amount of Quant and do this farming strategy with Wandering Path. So I decided to record my results for 60 maps. Now, in order to understand the results, we have to go into what was the method we used to do this farm so for the scarabs we're using winged reliquary winged cartography winged divination and winged ambush now using all winged scarabs is probably not the best idea in terms of the cartography and reliquary scarab i think the cartography scarab is pretty break even and the reliquary scarab is almost always going to be a loss unless you get lucky with a t0 unique now you can get lucky like i have found 
a lot of decent uniques. I found a Squire. I also found a Storm Shroud, and I found a perfect Aegis Aurora. So all of that added together, it's a lot of money, right? A Squire would probably pay for like I think that's a Squire's got to pay for like a hundred maps worth of Wing Reliquary or more. So that's how you can see that Wing Reliquary is probably positive EV at the end, but you have to get to the point where you can find the lottery drop of Mage Blood and Headhunter. Now for compasses, we are using 600% in raised strongbox or 500% in raised strongbox. It really comes down to what your cost, uh, what you want to do for the cost. I think 600% is probably worth it. It depends on the price of it. Last I saw, it was around like six to seven divines, which is pretty crazy. Plus three additional strongbox is what you use, and this is a 16U sextant. You use 20 quality on the maps because the maps don't have quality on them since we're getting them for the 8 mod corrupted map sextant. Another thing you could use is I like using two additional breaches or legion because the breaches actually pause the deli fog really well. So if you actually looked at the previous highlight video we were doing, a lot of times the deli fog would be moving too fast and having the breach will add some time to the timer and it'll also pause the fog while you're inside of the breach. And then the last compass we're using is the map drops are 8 mod corrupted. So you can see here, maps found in your area. Maps found in your maps are corrupted with 8 modifiers. So you can see a lot of the stuff we end up getting is all these maps that are 8 mod. And this is actually very, very useful because this actually lowers the setup time of the farming strategy a lot because you just pull out from your stash tab all these 8 mod maps. You don't have to worry about rolling the maps. You don't have to worry about chiseling the maps or enchanting the maps. So it's very, very chill. Now for the Atlas, this is a wandering path strategy for maximum quantity with focus on map drop slash duplication. You could theoretically not do wandering path. Your quant will be a lot lower and then you can try out using Harbinger or something like that or some other league mechanic. But you can see right here, we're taking all the map duplication nodes. We're taking some Delhi orb drop nodes, then some shrine chance nodes over here. And then these things will help out with the map drops. The, um, and then all of these are map duplication nodes. We take all of the increased effect of non-modifiers over the top. And these increase the chances of the strong boxes. And these allows you to open the strong boxes again. This stuff kind of slows down the Delimir progression. So it's actually pretty useful. And lastly, I took some breach chance. Because I do think that breach is probably one of the best league mechanics for slowing down the fog. So how much does this all cost? It does look like a very, very expensive strategy. And it is a very, very expensive strategy. Wing Scares probably cost around 7 per 1 Divine. If you buy it in huge, huge bulk quantities, you could probably get around 8 per 1 Divine. So roughly, you could say like each Scarab costs around like 35 Chaos. So for 4 Scarabs in a map, this brings it up to 140 Chaos, which is already around half a Divine. Now for Compasses, the 20 quality Compass is really cheap. It's like 5 Chaos. Then Raid Strongbox Compass is like around 180 Chaos in bulk. And this is the TFT, which is where you go to buy all of the compasses. Okay, that's not what we need. So let's go look it over here. For the compasses, you can go to this section over here. Without TFT, it's probably incredibly hard to buy the compasses. So you can see here all of the compasses you need. And then you just whisper to the person and they will actually be able to sell you in bulk. 8 mod maps around 105 chaos in bulk, additional strong boxes around 2 divines for 16 use. It actually got a lot more expensive since I started doing the strategy. So the compass cost for one map, if you average it all out per map, is around 104 chaos roughly. The map device cost to put Delhi mirror on the map is around 10 chaos. The cost of the 8 mod map, because putting in the 8 mod maps actually like you, these maps aren't free technically, so you could technically sell all of them and they cost around 10 chaos each. So roughly each map costs around one divine to run depending on how much you can buy the bulk compasses and scarabs for. So very, very, very high investment farming strategy. Now, what are the results? So we ended up running 57 maps total. I did have three maps that I kind of messed up, so I didn't include it. And when I mean mess up is when you accidentally forget to put the scarabs in or you forget to put the compasses in. And that's what happens when you're a really, really bad player like me. So 57 maps, I pretty much just rounded it around to like 60 divine total for investment. And what was our total excellence amount? This amount kind of changes every now and then because of the price on POE Ninja. So we ended up getting 70 divines roughly. 
from this farming method. And seven years bad luck, we got four. Enlightened, we got seven. And Dragon's Heart, we got three. So probably the, these results are pretty normal. So usually you could expect to get an apothecary, I think it's around eight to ten to seven years bad luck, and like ten enlightened roughly, somewhere around there. And in this set, sample size, we got zero apothecaries. So kind of sad to see, but it is what it is. And that's good for the video, right? We're trying to find out do we actually make money if we find no apothecaries with a maximum investment strategy. And the thing is, is that you kind of do maintain your money. In fact, if you take it by excellence, you actually end up making two divines per hour. So each map takes around four to five minutes to finish. So running 60 maps would take around five hours if you have 100% efficient play. Not that realistic, right? And the main thing to remember is that let's go look at the breakdown of the profits is that we got three void board reliquary keys. And that's kind of lucky in my opinion, unless they nerf the void board or buff the void board reliquary key drop rate because people keep putting in bad uniques. And in terms of the Reliquary Scarab and what it actually paid off, you can see that we didn't really make that much money, right? We found a Reign of Splinters, which is actually pretty good. It's around a Divine. We found an Energy from within. We found a Grusko's Pelt. We found a Rathplitz Glow. We found Asinath's Gentle Touch. We found Doriani's Prototype, some Tabulas, and Black Sun Crest and Ivory Tower. So not really that much good stuff. 1.6 Divines, and we spent a lot more than 1.6 Divines, right? Probably spent around 8 Divines in buying the Winged Reliquary Scarab. So that's already a 7 Divine loss. Now in terms of maps, you can see a lot of the profit is from the maps. And I did put them at 10 Chaos. You can sell the maps, the 8 mod maps on TFT roughly... 25 to 1 divine and then you can even sell for like 17 to 1 divine if they use their own filter so this amount could be a little bit higher so the maps you can see make up a decent chunk of the profit around like 30 percent of the profit and then the void board relic ready keys we did find three of them and then seven years bad luck the cards and the dragon's heart enlightened enlightened is not really worth that much anymore and it's actually funny, we did find 11 raw divines. A lot of these were for some like currency god touch or something like that. Which is kind of tied into the winged reliquary scare if you think about it. And then two screaming invitations. Uh, that's just stuff you get normally for mapping. It's kind of sad to see the screaming invitations being that high. And then we have some winged scarabs that we got from, what's it called? These winged scarabs were gotten from the god touch of the currency conversion. And I did put a pretty strict what's it called threshold of excellence if you actually look at excellence i don't really include anything let's see i don't include anything below like five chaos so if you go here you can set the price threshold and the total price threshold so that you don't have a lot of stuff that you'll never actually ever sell and even in this case there's a lot of stuff i probably won't sell i'm not going to sell every single map right it's pretty unrealistic and in all reality for me i'm not selling I mean, the Delhi Orbs, you could probably get around that much because you could sell it. Let's go further down. I think Incubators are a little bit troll. I probably would not sell the Incubators. I would not sell an 8 Chaos unique item. But that's just me. Personally, it's going to be different for everyone. I'm definitely not selling a, the Scouting Reports. So, But other than that, everything I would probably sell. I mean, Emperor's Luck is probably not really real. So if you look at it, you can still maintain your money, but... The strategy behind this is that the apothecary is a huge, huge impact, right? So you can say those 60 maps took around 5 hours to do. And the apothecary drop rate should be around 1 in 60 to 80 maps based on my experience with my amount of magic find. And you also have to consider, I'm actually running a character with nearly 90% magic find. I'm actually even running Grease Embrace. I'm running Eyes of the Great Wolf, 35%, 230%. So your results are actually going to be a lot worse. So if you're not actually running Magic Find and you're fully investing into the strategy, chances are you're probably going to be losing money unless you find an Apothecary card. Now the interesting thing is how much money would the strategy yield if you got your Apothecary card in the 60, 60 maps. And right now we can see that the Apothecary is roughly 10 Chaos? That can't be right. 10 Chaos. Oh wait, it's 55.6 Divines, okay. So roughly, when I looked at it and made this um, slide, it was around at 58 Divines. It's more expensive at nighttime. So if you take 58 or 60 divided by 5, it's roughly around 10 to 12 Divines per hour. 
And 10 to 12 divides per hour right now is the best money making method in the game roughly. And it's not really that close. There's not really that many money making methods that are above you know, or even close to 10 divines. However, the strat is done with magic fine. It's very, very high variance. So that's the fun part about it. That's probably why so many people gravitate towards the, sh the method. Now, how do you make this method more profitable? Now, all apothecary farming methods, in my opinion, have some way of generating consistent profit besides just the lottery drop. So you can see in this case, the a lot of my profit is through the Abon maps. And I did make a Atlas tree focused on finding the eight mod maps so i got as much map duplication as possible you can see right here the eight mod maps made up the majority of the profits so right here you can see i get around 18 divines from it and how much do i actually spend from the cost of it the cost of it was 105 chaos and that's 105 times like i think 15 so you can definitely see there's a lot of money to be made around 2,000 chaos roughly in terms of profit from the sextant in this uh, batch of 60 maps. And uh, you can see there's other methods. I know Snoobay has a method where he's doing Harbinger and he's getting a little bit of extra currency or extra consistent profit from the fracturing shards and mirror shards. And then you also get the Lyrum orb farm. So this strategy right here leverages Diviners, the Lyrum orbs and Skittering the Lyrum orbs in order to make money. And then there's also the other strategy that uses the enchant from Harvest, or not, yeah, enchant from Harvest that gives you infinite wing scarabs, conqueror maps, and makes it so their compasses don't cost money. So there's a lot of different apothecary farms out there. However, it really just comes down to how lucky you are in the apothecary drop, and I just can't stress that enough. I did have a 50 map batch where I dropped three apothecaries, but in the end, it really will feel a lot better if you just do like a 500 map sample size and your luck will probably even out a lot more. And there are some Scarab choices. I do think that using Winged Reliquary, Scarab or Gilded will probably result in a loss unless you get lucky with a high value unique. But I do think it's worth it in the long run if you do intend to play out the strategy for a long period of time. And I do think the number one thing you can do to increase your currency per hour is increasing your map clear speed and buying your mats in bulk. So the more maps you do per hour, the less time you spend buying supplies is the more profitable your currency method will become and the more likely you'll be able to get an apothecary card. So right now I do think, I kind of do recommend this farm if you want to have fun with it. It's not going to feel good if you don't find an apothecary though, regardless of how much magic funds you have or how much you try to optimize the strategy. Without the Apothecary dropping, the strategy is mid as hell. Now, Strongbox compasses are really, really expensive right now, and it's kind of sad to see. And it kind of goes to show you that right now in PoE, you do not get rewarded for killing monsters outside of it being from the altars, or from the Strongbox, or from guaranteed reward templates. And that's kind of something that's hard, sad to see. Now this exists because GGG did like a full blanket nerf to the quantity and rarity on mobs from the past league mechanics. So in the past we would try to do Alva Tempo, we try to get as many mobs in the Alva Tempo as possible. We would try to do incredible amounts of pack size so that we would get more beyond monsters to spawn. And then we would use Breach because the Breach monsters had increased quantity and rarity to get more card drops. However nowadays a lot of the past league mechanics just don't work like that. And we don't really get any sort of drop. So that's why the Strongbox sextants are so expensive. Because they're the only way to actually get Apothecaries to drop. With any sort of degree of certainty over a long period of time. So TLDR, even with the high cost of maps. I do think that this method can maintain a slight profit. As long as you have another profitable mechanic built into your farming strategy. And I will put my Atlas tree down below. And this strategy, I do think... It is semi profitable, like one to two divines per hour, and then it spikes up to 10 to 12 divines per hour if you find the car. But thanks for watching, everyone. I just wanted to clear up a lot of questions that people are asking, which is can you actually make profit with the strategy if you don't find an apothecary card? And the answer is yes, but very, very little. Thanks for watching. I hope you find more divines and apothecaries than me, and see you next time. Bye. Yeah.